These are um, uh, Russet Burbank. They're in perfect shape. They've been on the floor of my garage. The garage is about five degrees Celsius all winter long. Perfectly stored, perfectly preserved. This is the first time I've opened this box in about three minutes. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and it's uh, late January, mid to late January, and I thought I'd do another State of the Storage Vegetables video. I did one of these a couple of years ago, just showing people how much stuff I had kicking around the house that came out of the garden that I stored in various ways. So I thought I'd do that again. I'll probably miss a couple things here, but now the last time I did this, I brought every single thing up here in the kitchen and brought you all around the house and showed you everything, which is kind of neat, but it's uh, a little bit chaotic. So. What I'm doing this time is just showing you examples of all these things and then telling you how much of it I have and you'll have to do the extrapolation in your imagination, <laughs> right? Um, but I did a little bit of a, you know, uh, inventory this morning and uh, yeah, I think this will be useful for you. So let's get started. Um, number one, uh, pesto. So uh, I grow garlic. In uh, May, the garlic put up their garlic scapes and they, there's well, I, I had 250 garlic growing in my garden this year. Way too many garlic scapes to use up in stir fries and things like that. So uh, you put it in a food processor and you make a little paste out of it using some other stuff. You put it in a little container like this. You put it in your freezer and you just take them out and use them. I got two kinds of pesto. I've got this kind, it's called pesto. And this is something I'd use for any sort of, you know, Italian, any dish that just needs, uh, this is basically garlic and a uh, basic suite of uh, Mediterranean Italian type herbs uh, and olive oil. oil. Um, so I call that pesto. And if I was going to make anything of pasta or anything, anything requiring garlic, I just throw a couple, uh, one or two tablespoons of this in to give it a garlic flavor. And there's salt, of course, in it. This is another kind of pesto I make. I call it Asian pesto. <laughs> so, you know, uh, we do cook a, a lot of different styles of food here in the house. And uh, I like to do a lot of stir fries and things like that. And so you don't necessarily want oregano and, you know, sage and savory and basil and things like that in your, um, sometimes I guess it could make sense to have basil, but generally speaking, the things you would be using for uh, an Italian style dish wouldn't really go in a, uh, you know, Chinese type cooking stir fry. So this one I call Asian pesto, and this is garlic with oil and soy sauce and sesame seed oil, I, I believe, and salt, of course. Um, so for these two things, I've got, how many of these are pesto? Um, I've got nine of these. That's including these and there's one of each in the fridge. That's probably 11, I guess. Uh, now these ones I make much bigger because I use more of it. Um, but I've got about, I think four of these this size and you know, six of these, right? That sort of thing, right? So that's the garlic scapes. Still using the garlic scapes I grew in, uh, in, in May, or uh, you know, last summer, uh, last summer. And uh, what I do is I, I, you know, I use the garlic scapes until uh, I have garlic to start harvesting, then I start using the harvest, uh, garlic, and I leave the pesto alone until I run out of my stored garlic. So for store, I grew 250 garlic this year, and unless I've misplaced something, this is all I have left <laughs> for. Right, so <laughs> that ain't much. <laughs> so uh, these will be gone in a matter of days, and then I'll just exhaust all of this stuff, and then I'll go to the store-bought stuff. Um, you know, because I'll, you know, we use a lot of garlic here. We eat it almost every day, and we will run out of everything um, probably in the next month or so, and have to buy stuff until my garlic tapes come up again next May. So that's garlic garlic and herbs too, I guess, because I tend, for at least for the one I just call pesto, I throw a lot of herbs in it. I have videos on how I make it. You can take a look at those and see how I do it. Um, for pickles, I've got uh, beets. This is my, I got another one in the fridge, but this is my, my last stored jar of, of pickled beets. Love pickled beets, but this is it. I, you know, I probably had about five or six of these. This is it. We went through them pretty quick. For, yeah, so uh, for relish, I, I like to make a, a kind of a zucchini relish. I make a lot of it. And uh, this is the, the uh, zucchini relish, canned zucchini relish. Uh, I've got 14 of these. Some of them are green because I'm using the green zucchini and some of them are yellow because I'm using the yellow zucchini. I call this the golden zucchini relish. 
Um, so I have 14 of these, including this one, and there's one in the fridge, I guess that makes 15. Um, this is a, a sort of paste I make with um, rhubarb. So it's, it's easy enough to freeze rhubarb. Uh, you just cut it up and throw it in the freezer. Because most of the dishes I use rhubarb for, at least, it's, it's, I turn it into a kind of mush. Right? You don't eat rhubarb as like a fresh sauteed vegetable. It's usually a mush in something, a sauce or a filling in a dessert. Um, I would say 95% of the rhubarb I grow ends up as rhubarb crisp. So I have a recipe for rhubarb crisp. There's a recipe for the filling. And this is basically rhubarb crisp filling. And it's got all the elements of something that'll store well. It's basically just sugar and rhubarb, as I recall, <laughs> right? So, you know, there's, there's no real protein. It's an ideal thing for, for canning. So these are canned. I've got uh, uh, three of these, including this one. And that's, um, you know, one of these would make a nice, really robust rhubarb crisp. Um, Lacto-fermented pickles. I got these in my garage downstairs. Uh, I've got pickles. I got eight of these, including this one's downstairs, and I got one uh, in my fridge. That's uh, on the go. I've given myself uh, a limit of one, one jar a month. That's my, my ration. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll go through them too quick. Uh, also, I, I didn't pull it out here, but I've got the, uh, where the heck is it now? What I call magic tomatoes. Oh. Get rid of that. Uh, so this is the lacto-fermented pickles. These are like Roma-style, uh, sorry, Roma-style tomatoes, lacto-fermented Roma tomatoes. Uh, so I think I made about four jars like this, and there's a half a jar in the fridge and this one. I just left them in the fridge because they were so little. Um, so I use this, I don't eat them. Some people just eat them out of the jar. I like to add them to dishes they give. Um, you can use them in all kinds of things. You can use them in pasta. You can use them in uh, stir fries and stuff like that. And you can use the, the juice in things as well because it's it basically like a vinegar, a very, it's like tomato vinegar if you put it that way. So it adds a very unique flavor to a lot of different things. Um, and this is something you, you have to make, you can't buy it. So I, I call them magic tomatoes because they're just so good and they keep. Uh, so yeah, I've got one and I think a half in the fridge of that. Uh, also, I should mention, out in the garden, I've got two, one bed and a half bed of parsnips just under plastic domes in the garden. That's a lot of parsnips. That's, that's a lot of Sunday dinners, let's put it that way, right? Uh, so I don't anticipate running out of those things. I anticipate pulling the last of them out, you know, just before things start to warm up. Because once it warms up, they'll start to grow and they won't be good anymore. But we harvest, and I got carrots. I got one four by eight bed of carrots that's about half used up. So one row of, I, I tend to bring a, a lot in at a time. I'll fill a bowl and bring them in and put them in the crisper in the fridge and just use them over the course of the week. But I've got about half a bed of those, which is a, a good amount. Like it would, the amount, that's, the amount that's in the ground outside would probably at least fill a box this size, probably even more, right? So anytime I make a stir fry, or I want, uh, you know, sort of a roasted dinner in the oven. I want those nice roasted carrots or sliced up in a stir fryer. I add them to everything. I add them to, uh, I even put them in pasta. I cut them up really small and sort of smuggle them in so the kids get their veggies in there. So I got lots of carrots left. Um, I'm getting a little bit off my schedule here, but um, I guess I should go with one more. This is um, potatoes, right? So it's how I store my potatoes. I got videos on this just in a cardboard box with different tiers, right? This is just, you put a layer of potatoes, a layer of carb, a paper, cardboard, heavy paper bag, another layer of potatoes, and so on and so forth. These are um, uh, Russet Burbank. They're in perfect shape. They've been on the floor of my garage. The garage is about five degrees Celsius all winter long. Perfectly stored, perfectly preserved. This is the first time I've opened this box in about three months. <laughs> and they're just, they're in perfect shape. Like, there's no smell, there's no order. So, I mean, when I put them in the box, I examine, I've done videos on this, I examine all my potatoes very carefully, and anything with any kind of flaw gets put aside and used up right away, you just cut away the bad part. All the perfect ones go into storage. This is the last of them. So this will probably last us a couple months, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's what we got left of the potatoes. Um, I grew a lot of potatoes this year, but we ate a lot. <laughs> so we've just gone through, you know, 
Uh, you know, every year our food need, needs change as a family because I've got two kids and they get bigger every year and they eat more. So, you know, uh, my daughter's 10, my son's 12, and they're both growing a lot right now. So they, they're eating as much as me sometimes, and I'm six foot four, 215 pound man. So, yeah, they're, you know, I, I had breakfast with them, they ate as much as me today, <laughs> right? So <laughs> my wife stays the same. She eats uh, very, like a bird sort of thing. But uh, my kids are sort of turning into serious eaters. Um, so I'm going through these things so much faster. I mean, if you look back over my videos, I've got videos where I say, hey, I grew 100 garlic and they're all gone and it's January. And now it's 2021 and uh, I grew 250 garlic and it's January and they're almost, I've got all but four left. Um, so, <laughs> kids, right? <laughs> um, they call, uh, you know, having two children, uh, a male and a girl, a boy and a girl, a uh, millionaire's family. I don't know why they call it that, but uh, I'm getting, uh, starting to get the idea of why they're called that. Uh, so, uh, frozen uh, vegetables. Uh, yesterday, we just ate the last of all my frozen blanched peas. I had about three, three bags of this size, and they're all gone. Uh, I mean, there's no point in leaving this stuff sitting around, right? You, you use it. It's in your freezer. It's... it's it's not going to keep forever like that. So um, we're still not really buying that much produce right now. We're just using everything up, clearing out the freezer. Why hang on to it, right? Use it. <laughs> it's not going to keep forever. Um, and it's going to degrade over time. So this is the last of the beans that I, I believe. I took a look around the, in the um, freezer this morning. This is all I could see for beans. They take up a lot of space, so we tend to use them aggressively. Also, you know, coming out of the fall... Um, you know, I'm harvesting kale in my garden right up until um, December, and then uh, we're kind of kaled out. We still like it, but <laughs> kind of kaled out a little bit. Uh, so uh, around this time of year, we tend to like eating a lot of beans and peas uh, because we've just been eating kale, 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 kale all the time, and, and things like that, right, in that family, uh, Swiss chard, brassicas, all this sort of stuff. Uh, the garden's not producing that stuff anymore. So it's nice to have a little change and have peas and beans. We're eating a lot of that right now, but this will be gone in a couple weeks. Also, I've got these uh, kale. So, yes, I grew a lot of kale. And I'm basically harvesting and eating it from, let's say, June until a few weeks ago. But the garden's done. It's you know, snowing outside and everything's frozen and nothing's growing and we have just used everything up. Um, so you store it in these little cakes, right? And I've got videos on how to do this. But that, that cake of kale, that is, if you consider a, a bowl, a fresh bowl of kale. I go out in the garden and I harvest kale until this bowl is overflowing with kale. That turns into a cake like this, okay? So that's enough kale for a nice green side dish with a, with a nice meal, okay? So, uh, in terms of kale like this, I've got uh, kale. i got 12 of these, including these two. 12 of these in the deep freeze. There's probably, I think there's at least one up here as well. 13. One more thing. Herbs. I almost forgot. So, I got these, uh, you know, uh, dried herbs in little bundles like this. I did a video on how to make those. I've also got them in uh, dried herbs, uh, the stuff that comes off the, uh, the, the branches and stuff like that. I've got them in here. I've got another container somewhere, I just can't find it right now, with more of this. And I've got uh, all of this uh, rosemary. I got off my rosemary plants, which I like to use with meats and stuff like that. Also, I like to put them in the coffee grinder and grind them up really fine and sprinkle them over parsnips with garlic to roast. Very, very good. So I've got that as well. So I think, I think that's everything off the top of my head um, that I can think of that's kicking around in the house. So yeah, that's, you know, we've got the dried herbs, we've got lots of carrots, lots of parsnips, uh, 14 jars of relish like this, three things of rhubarb like this, uh, nine things of pesto. <laughs> uh, sounds like uh, the 12 days are Christmas. 12 cakes of kale, two bags of beans, <laughs> and so on and so forth, right? Um, uh, the potatoes. Oh, no. Sorry, I said this was... Right. This is why you take notes. I don't have one box. I have three boxes of potatoes. There's two more boxes this size downstairs of potatoes, not just this one. And uh, I think they're almost all um, the uh, Russet Burbank. 
I grow a number of different I could be wrong, but um, I grow a lot of a number of different varieties. But these keep so well, I tend to eat them last in the dead of winter. Um, I got some here. This is my last of my uh, uh, purple chief potatoes, right? Getting down to the smaller the little ones that are left over, right? Um, but yeah, I've got three boxes this size of potatoes downstairs. So not one box, three. <laughs> I remember I was, as I was saying this is the last box, I was thinking, surely that can't be. But yeah, the notes. Three boxes of potatoes. That's where we are. And it says two beans here, so I guess we have another bag downstairs. Um, maybe I just couldn't, I, I don't know. I, 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 I made all these notes early this morning and I'm, you know, getting uh, maybe senile in my uh, late 40s. Who knows? Uh, of course I forgot something, so we're going into gorilla mode here. But uh, yeah, I got lots of this. Uh, you, you can't see it down in there, but I got about, I don't know, about six jars of this uh, strawberry jam in the freezer. Uh, most of these are from the garden, but not all of them. Uh, we need about a dozen of these to get us through the year. <laughs> so, so I got that. And uh, more, uh, I think this is Swiss chard, which is in these uh, Tupperware containers. Got a lot of Tupperware. Yeah, I forgot to mention I've got these uh, squash in the garage as well. I got uh, one Georgia candy roaster and these uh, Sweet Mama, three of those. And, and I got half one of these in the fridge right now that I'm going to use for supper today. Um, these have kept really, really well. Now, the, the one of these that I used last weekend, the, the end was starting to go uh, bad. This one's fine. Well, no. No. See, look, it's getting a bit soft there. A little bit of softness there. This, this has to go. So this is the next one I'll use. I'll leave it out like that so I can see that it's starting to go. You just cut that part away and use it. But these ones are mint. They're totally, totally fine. All right, these ones are totally fine. So, uh, yeah. Definitely the, this year of the different varieties I grew, the Sweet Mama is the best storage. Um, these just grow so vigorously and grow so well, but you got to be aware that they don't, at least in my experience, maybe it's just too cold in here, who knows? I mean, all these things, everything's different, right? But these don't seem to keep as well as these ones here, for sure. And these are very good tasting, they're drier, these are a bit wetter, they're still good. Right, but these are a very, uh, you know, if you like your, your squash to sort of dry, um, these are um, higher moisture content, which is probably why they don't keep as well. But both very good tasting. I'm happy with both. I'll continue to grow these just because they do so well here. Um, but uh, I might do these again. I, mean, I tend to try a different, there's so many different kinds of squash. I tend to try a different kind every year. Uh, just too curious about things, but I'm really happy with this one. I would recommend it, the Sweet Mama. But uh, anyway, that's where we are with all of that. Um, lots of stuff left. You know, we, this, the garden I grew in the summer, in the spring, in the fall, when everything wasn't frozen, uh, is still feeding me. It's still feeding the family. We're still enjoying the benefits of it. And it's still saving us money in the grocery store because we've got all these things to eat. Um, so, you know, that's why I do this. That's why I garden. I mean, you know, uh, aside from all the other great aspects of gardening, that's why I'm doing it. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there. Get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. <laughs>